today, maxed out rental stress mapping. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and the Listeners of this post covering finance and property news. Well, this is the second in my series of mapping posts following the live show that we did just over a week ago. And today we're going to focus in on the rental stress mapping. This is because there is a very important conversation to be had about what's going on in the rental sector. The truth is that those in the rental sector are under extreme pressure. And of course, those who watched my show last week will know that the latest information relating to stress shows that the rental sector is really doing it tough at the moment. In fact, we have a higher than ever level of rental stress in the model at the moment. It's at 77.26%. That's the highest it's ever been. And to recap, of course, when we talk about rental stress, we're talking about cash flow pressures, money in, money out. So people in the rental sector having effectively more obligations than their ability to cover the income for them. It's worth noting, of course, there was a recent report that came out showing that around 2 million households across the country are missing meals to try and get by. A lot of those are in the rental sector. And recently, there was another piece of analysis showing that about 2% of houses available for rent were accessible for people on average incomes, which really, again, highlights the issues we've got. So as we go into the specifics here, just to remind you, we did publish this information last week, and we showed that in the rental stress sector, around 77.26% of households were in rental stress, and that equates to 2.39 million households across the country. And here is the information at the postcode level summarising the fact that Victorian postcode 3000 has the highest count of those in rental stress at more than 15,600, followed by Toowoomba 4350 with 14,050, and then Liverpool in New South Wales 2170 at 13,778, and then Wentworthville in New South Wales 2145 at just over 11,000, Southport in Queensland 4215 with more than 11,400, and then Tarnit and Dermont in Victoria. Zetland in New South Wales, Campbelltown in New South Wales, Cooma in Queensland, Mount Druitt in New South Wales, Cranbourne in Victoria, Blacktown in New South Wales, Ipswich in Queensland, Highgate Hill and South Brisbane in Queensland, and Gosford on the central coast. So now let's start to look at the maps. So this is the rental stress analysis map for the Sydney region, and you can see there that areas to the west 2145, 2170, Campbelltown, Blacktown, they're all showing up. There are also some areas closer into the city, including areas around Bondi and to the north and the south of the city too. But the real hotspots are in the west, and we've been seeing this playing out for some long time. Switching to Melbourne, we can see there that there is this ring of fire around the centre of Melbourne, as well as Melbourne 3000 itself, which, as I said, is right at the top there. But you can see there that from 3030, 3029, 3064, and 3977, there is a ring there. And Ballarat also is on the list too. Rental stress is widely spread, and it isn't just concentrated in the central business district. It's spread into the urban areas too, and also regional centres, including Ballarat. If I look at the Brisbane area, once again, you can see that there are significant areas. The Gold Coast, Toowoomba, Ipswich, Moreton Bay and areas to the north of Brisbane. And one or two areas closer in like 4300 as well. And closer into Brisbane, some areas are under some stress, but not quite so much as in those other areas. Looking at the rental stress in Adelaide, there is some not as high. The population density per postcode is lower, which helps to explain some of the differences, but there are some hotspots, particularly to the north and south of the city. Over in the west, we do see a distribution of rental stress. It's quite widespread, actually, not as severe as we saw in Brisbane or Victoria, 
but nevertheless from Rocknam in the south up to Wanneroo and on the coastal areas and in and around Perth itself, there are quite a few people in difficulty. And I noticed that areas like the Swan and Inland 2 are also in some difficulty. If we then look at the story in Tasmania, and remembering the population density is lower, it is worth noting that in and around Hobart, there are quite a few households who are in rental stress. Rents, of course, have dramatically risen for many over the last year or two. Incomes have not, so there's no surprise, perhaps, that people are having difficulty. Finally, the ACT. And I would highlight that whilst close into the centre of the ACT, things aren't too bad. In the suburban areas around the ACT, because of the high rental growth and because of the fact that we have significant household pressure because of lack of income growth, rental stress is significantly high. So that brings us to the end of this particular show, which focuses in on rental stress. It's worth noting that, of course, it does vary by individual households. And in some areas, we are close to 100% of households having some cash flow difficulty. But let me stress, this is measuring money in, money out. It doesn't mean they're going to fall over immediately, but it does put a lot of pressure on those households. Now, the interesting question that follows from that is what is the impact on the property investor set? And in the next show, we're going to look at the investment stress mapping, and we will also cover off the question of the net rental yield. Because one of the other observations that we see quite often is that households who are in the investment sector don't understand how bad their investments are actually performing in cash flow terms. So look out for that show, which will be published soon, where we look at the investor sect. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.